and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Last week and this week we've been working on a reptile unit for science and today we're going to continue learning about new kinds of reptiles. So far we've learned about ball pythons, crested geckos, corn snakes, and today we're going to be learning about blue-tongued skinks. Now you may have seen the title of this video and been like, I have no idea what a blue-tongued skink is, and that's okay. I'm here to tell you about them today. So blue-tongued skinks are a type of lizard, and the reason that they're called blue-tongued skinks is because they actually have a blue tongue. So that's something pretty interesting as well. Most animals do not have a blue tongue, right? A skink is just a certain kind of lizard, just like geckos are a certain kind of lizard. So I have a blue tongue skink here with me. He's actually my son's pet and his name is Cadet. So my son named him Cadet. He's actually our newest pet and newest reptile. So he's still um, a little nervous of us just cause he's not used to us yet, but I'm going to show him to you now. So he's huffing and puffing a little bit cause he's not totally used to us. So he's a pretty big lizard. His body is about a foot long and his tail is about another foot long. So here's his face. Can you see his blue tongue? <laughs> and he's got kind of reddish eyes too. So this is Cadet. Can you stick your tongue out one more time for the camera? Don't be shy now. <laughs> there we go. All right, I'm going to put him on my shoulder because he'll be much more comfortable here while I talk. Won't you? Just stay right there, buddy. Okay, so blue tongue skinks. Let's talk about them. Where are they from? In the wild, they're from two main places. And it's really interesting because um, blue tongue skinks from these two different places have really different care requirements. So some blue tongue skinks are from Australia, which is funny because that's kind of where crested geckos are from. They're from islands right next to Australia called New Caledonia, but anyways. <laughs> so they're either found in Australia or they're found in Indonesia. So the blue tongue skinks that are from Australia are called northern blue tongue skinks. And the um, blue tongue skinks that are from Indonesia, some of them are just called Indonesian blue tongue skinks. But there's also different subspecies of Indonesian blue tongue skinks. So there's different kinds of Indonesian blue tongue skinks. So I'm explaining that to you because cadet here is a kind of Indonesian blue tongue skink. He's a certain type called a Halmahera blue tongue skink. So those are a lot of big words and fancy names. But Halmahera just means the certain part of Indonesia that he's originally from. Now he was born here in the United States, but Halmahera blue tongue skinks are usually born in Indonesia. Now, what I mentioned before that skinks from Australia and Indonesia have totally different care requirements. Um, Indonesian and Halmahera specifically because cadets a Halmahera blue tongue skink, the Indonesians need a lot higher humidity and higher temperatures than the t Northern blue tongue skinks or the ones that are from Australia. So when I'm talking about the care requirements today, I'm going to be talking about Indonesian or more specifically Halmahera blue tongue skink requirements. Because if they had lesser humidity or lower temperatures like the northern blue tongue skinks have, they, they wouldn't do very well health wise. They would have some health problems. So that's a reason right there, if you were to ever get a blue tongue skink, it's really, really important to know which type that you have. Because if they don't have the proper humidity and the proper heat, they could get pretty sick and need to go to the vet and have medicine and that's just a whole bunch of mess that you don't wanna deal with. So we know for sure, because we got him from a breeder, that he is a Halmahera, which is a type of Indonesian blue tongue skink. So let's talk about what they need to survive. What do they eat? Blue tongue skinks are really cool because they can eat a lot of different things. In the wild, they eat different kinds of meats and insects and fruits and vegetables. And here in captivity, which again is the opposite of the wild, that means like having them as a pet, they can eat all those things, meat, insects, vegetables, and fruit. 
However, it's important to know which kinds of meat, which kinds of insects, which kinds of vegetables, and which kinds of fruits are okay for blue tongue skinks to have. So something super interesting, and this is a fun fact for you, is that blue tongue skinks, one thing that they eat a lot of in, as pets are wet dog food. Now I know that probably sounds really weird, like what, this lizard eats wet dog food? It's true. And the reason why they eat wet dog food is because uh, it's a type of meat, dog food is made out of meat, and it has a lot of the kind of like meat and vitamins that they would get in the wild. So they eat wet dog food. Now, of course, I'm not making up this information. I didn't just try to give him wet dog food and see if he liked it. Breeders of blue tongue skinks have tested this for many years and know that they do really well and stay healthy on wet dog food. Um, another thing that they really like is snails. So you can find cans of snails and give that to them. They also like live insects like dubia roaches, which are not the same as cockroaches. They won't infest your house. You can buy them at certain pet stores. Uh, they also like, you know, crickets and mealworms and things like that that you could find at a reptile store or other pet store. And then there's certain kinds of fruit and vegetables that they can eat. Not everything is safe for them though. So it's important to research which types of fruit and vegetables are safe for them. They should have more vegetables than fruit. It's important that they have like some leafy greens and things like that, but they shouldn't especially have too much fruit because it can give them too much sugar, which isn't good for them. Um, but they especially do really well on wet dog food. Um, they like certain things like eggs, not so much eggs like we eat, but quail eggs. Quails are a type of bird. We actually gave him a quail egg today. I'm going to show you after I finish talking here, a video of him kind of eating that quail egg. And, um, so they really like quail eggs, snails, wet dog food. They also make kind of like I showed with the crested geckos in that video, like a powder that you add water to. They make that for blue tongue skinks as well. And then they need just a little bits of fruits and vegetables, a lot of the same things that your family might pick out to eat. So they kind of have a lot of different things that they eat, kind of like us. We eat all those things besides insects. Hopefully you don't eat insects. I don't. <laughs> but um, we eat meats, fruits, vegetables, so they kind of eat those things too. But it's important to make sure, like I said before, that you know for a fact that the vegetables and fruits that you're feeding them are okay for them. For example, avocados, this is a really interesting fact, avocados are poisonous or toxic to almost every single animal. If he were to eat avocado, he would not make it. He'd get really super sick. Same for if you give avocado to your dog or cat, it's toxic and poisonous to animals. So that's why it's super important to make sure that things are safe for not just blue tongue skinks, but any animal to eat. All right, let's move on. So they can eat lots of different things. And my chair's in the way there, there we go. What kind of environment do they like to have? Now, like I said before, there's two different main kinds of blue tongue skinks, the Australian or Northern and Indonesian. Um, I'm gonna be talking about the Indonesians here since um, Cadet is a Halmahera, which is a type of Indonesian blue tongue skink. So they're terrestrial lizards. That means they like to live on the ground. Um, they like it really hot. So they like it around 90 degrees all the time. So we have some heat lights on his enclosure and we have a temperature gauge making sure that his um, temperature stays around 90 degrees. We also have a like a heat pad underneath his tank which is set to a thermostat to make sure it doesn't get too hot because it's also not good for animals to get overheated either. Indonesian blue tongue skinks need really high humidity. He needs his humidity or moisture in, his, in the air in his enclosure around 85% all the time. So that means we have to mist down his enclosure, we have to add water to his wood chips and bedding in there. It's important to research which types of bedding hold high humidity. For example, if you were to use certain kinds of wood chips in there, 
Certain kinds of wood like cedar or pine are toxic to animals, so you can't use them. Other types of wood like aspen, like things like hamsters would use, don't hold humidity, they just mold, so they're not good for skinks either. So they need a type of wood like coconut husks or cypress mulch that holds moisture really well so that you can keep their enclosure around 85% safely without it molding or being toxic to them. And lastly, they need places to hide and bask in the wild and in their enclosure. So they like hiding. They don't like to be out in the open because they have predators like birds and things like that that would eat them. Uh, and also they like to bask. I mentioned that in the corn snake video that basking is kind of sitting out in the sun, which is like tanning for us. So they like to sit out in the sun and have that sun warm up their body. So that is what blue tongue skinks like. They're a little, uh, I would say the Indonesian blue tongue skinks especially are a little bit harder to take care of than the northern blue tongue skinks just because they need such high um, temperatures and high humidity in their enclosure. But if you're really careful about monitoring it, they're pretty good lizards. What I think is the coolest fact about them is that they can eat so many different kinds of food. Um, for example, the, my snakes that I have, they typically just eat mice or rats. So I think it's cool that this blue tongue skink can eat dog food, vegetables, insects. He gets like a whole salad at mealtime, basically. So that's something really cool about him. Um, also, I don't know if you can tell, but they've got really short legs, which that's a fun fact about skinks is they have really short legs. So they're not good climbers, typically. They like being on the ground. Now, one thing that I don't really like about Cadet, which isn't a big deal, is that he has really sharp nails. So I'm wearing a sweater and a scarf because he is, his little nails as he's climbing on me here, they're digging kind of through my clothes into my skin. But he's not trying to hurt me, he just has sharp nails. Um, skinks are really unlikely to bite. They're really sweet animals. They're more likely to kind of huff and puff to try to scare you off than to bite you. You can hear him huffing a little bit, which I mentioned before is just because he's kind of new to our family, so he doesn't know us super well yet. Um, he's still getting used to us, so that's why he's a little huffy puffy. But um, they're very sweet. This is typically what their coloring looks like for the Indonesians. And of course, the best part, the best fun fact, is that they have that blue tongue. And here it is again. <laughs> so that's Cadet, and that's what blue tongue skinks are like. They're a nice medium to large size lizard, super cool reptile that I feel like people don't know a lot about. Um, when you hear about snakes, probably a lot of you have maybe heard about corn snakes or ball pythons before, but not a lot of people know about blue tongue skinks, so I'm glad to share him with you today. So um, I'm going to show you Cadet's enclosure now. This is a video from earlier today when we were feeding him his food. So I'll kind of show you what's in his enclosure and show how he's eating to you. This is Cadet's house. He's got some water in here, you can see, because he needs a lot of humidity in his enclosure like we talked about. But here he is, he was just eating. He was eating, that's a quail egg and some wet dog food. And he really likes those. All right, so thank you everyone for tuning in today. I hope you're enjoying this reptile series. What you'll do now is you'll do your blue tongue skink worksheet and fill out the things that you've learned about blue tongue skinks from this video today. And I will see you tomorrow. We'll be learning about a new kind of reptile tomorrow. All right, thank you, bye-bye.